Hey, welcome to Minor Details. I'm Nick. And I'm James. And we are two industrial designers in the big city. Sweating the small stuff. How you been, man? Pretty good. Good, good. I, uh, I'm excited to hear some of your uh, weekly updates. Oh, man. Because you've been teasing them on the Instagram. Yeah, so uh, I guess this past week I finally announced my little design brand. Yeah? Uh, Edor. Edor. Okay. E- First of all, everyone was a little confused on whether it was Idor or Edor. No, it, it's... Defi- definitely not Idor. If it was Idor, the, the D would be capitalized. Okay, okay. You know? So it's We E-dor. all know the Apple precedent. Right. Like E-dor. iPhone, right? Yeah. It's Edor. E- it's, e- it's an e-phone, right? E-door. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's an E-door. Got it's it. uh, an electronic door got is it, what it. I'm selling here. Now, we'll tell um, everyone the little, uh, the little uh, delightful uh, story behind the name. Well, so basically, here's the thing. Let's go back. 2012, or I don't know. When it, whenever I started I Draw and Receipts, I mean, the whole idea behind that was... I mean, I've told this history on the podcast before, but it was like this, this sort of thing where um, I was doing a web comic at the time, and so I started I draw on receipts as this way to draw, just whatever, because I was doing this really like stylized all Illustrator web comic, and I wanted a place to do some loose stuff, right? And so I started I draw on receipts, and you know, it's. I draw and receipts kind of took off in a way, and I was just kind of very surprised by everything that's happened with I draw and receipts. And and you'd always you originally started sketching on receipts. You don't sketch on receipts. No, much I anymore. don't sketch on receipts anymore. It's, but you would leave the receipts at the restaurant, right? Yes, it's 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 an idea. It's it's right, this right. idea of make i make ideas, but don't get married to an idea. Mm, right, right, right. But you know. I mean, due to creators such as yourself, also one of my good friends from college, Elise Birnbaum, who uh, she runs an Instagram called uh, Oatmeal, Oatmeal Shop. Um, I met her my freshman year, and she's one of those people. Do you remember, I think it was a couple episodes ago, we were talking about surround yourself with inspirational people. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's... She is one of those people to me. I met her in college. She was an art major, a studio art major, and she was constantly making things, and she seemed completely fearless about right. it. Right, just, just a, a, a machine. Yeah, so I've just always admired her for that tenacity, and so she started this this little brand for herself. Oh, this is beautiful. It's like, it's like clay stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of clay stuff going on. She started out with these clay knots, Okay. so she would... She, she makes, you know, she makes all these things. I think most of her things, she has some metal items as well. It's like a necklace. Is, but that, yeah. a, is that a little brush? It's a, yeah, she makes, That's she cool. makes all sorts of really interesting things and very forward thinking things. And, um, it's not a, afraid to explore. Right. And, but I was just really intrigued. She, she started this brand and she just built it, you know, brick by brick, like, you know, uh, that's how you got to do it. There's no other way. Not, right. And so I, I really admired that and, and was interested in what I could do in that space. And then at the same time, meeting you and seeing what you were doing, you know, it's the same idea. I wanted, I'm not necessarily out there to make some sort of huge splash in any sort of market. Right. Like I want to take some of the these ideas that I have in the I draw and receipts world and make them real right. and have it so that people can can purchase them. And so the bottle opener was the the first thing that I made that I was that I was interested in in selling. Now wait, I, I don't want to skip over this detail. Okay. The Edor detail. Oh yeah, the Edor detail is is I draw on receipts, Edor. The acronym. It's acronym, acronym for I, I draw on receipts. It's, yeah. It can quickly get missed, but I love it because it's yeah. like a nice little touch. Yeah. I mean, I, that. so yeah, that's that's like the full circle. And thank you for right. bringing me back there right. because it's, yeah, I draw on receipts for whatever reason has carried me this far. And I feel like even if I draw on receipts goes away, like 
and and Edor stays like I like the abstraction of the name. Yeah. I think it really feels more of like a uh, some so you you can put a voice to it now. It has right. it has no meaning, and you can choose what voice it has. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, the the first product is is this bottle opener that I designed. Um, I actually, <laughs> it's a funny story. The inspiration for the bottle opener, like when I had the idea, was in the middle of a Peloton spin class. It's like it's circular shaped. It is circular shaped. It's inspired by the <laughs> Peloton industrial design, or what? It was just this idea. I just I was thinking about this idea of a pipe splitting and mm-hmm. coming back together, and how the inside of the pipe could then be used. That ledge could be used as the ledge for the bottle opener. And so the first thing that I tried was an actual like splitting and sort of a circle. But of right. course a circle doesn't really lend itself to like a bottle opener in right. that way. Cause it just, there's nothing to push against there's the not, cap. There's really. no leverage, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so eventually through a lot of sketch iteration, I, um, I arrived at that circle shape, right? It's the circle within a circle. Yeah. And very the, simple form, but elegant. Right, but the the thing the thing is the other part of this story, and this also goes back to another thing that we talked about in another episode was sitting on a, on, a, on a design mm-hmm. for a while, and so I was, I was just I, I kind of played with the bottle opener for, like, you know six months or so, uh, and I, I was feel like I feel like the first time I came over to your house you had a prototype of the bottle really. Opener. I so think. this is so this is like or maybe you're showing me sketches. This is like a year I mean, more than a year ago. Definitely. It probably yeah. was before we started the po- it was like Thanksgiving. In, my first Thanksgiving in New York. Really? Did you invite me for Thanksgiving? Yeah, I invited you for Thanksgiving. The, the very first year I was here. Yeah. So it was that long ago. Wow. 2, two years ago? Yeah, it w- it did start it. So it's been going on for a long time. Right. And um, but yeah, as I was playing with this thing, one of the things that I realized as I was looking at Elise Birnbaum's knots, uh, cause, cause the bottle opener itself, I liked it, but it didn't necessarily feel complete. And in looking at the knots, it's like, oh my gosh, this could make a really cool functional necklace. Mm, right, right, right. Um, so that's one, one variation of of the bottle opener that you can, that people will be able to purchase. And then the, the other variation actually came from a conversation with my friend, Dylan Mellinger, who, uh, who runs black Fox furniture. And he was saying, you know, you should, you should sell it with one of those wooden cones that they use for rings because you know, one of the stand. Yeah. And one of the ways that you use the bottle opener, I'm going to release a video of like the different ways you can use it. But one of them is putting your finger through that hole in the bottle opener so that you can, you know, you basically put it on like a ring. Interesting. And, uh, and open that way. And so I felt like it lent itself to that. It kind of cues you to that, to that way of using it. Right. And so you are also releasing this. It's available to buy today. Technically, as as the pod is released. Well, I'm Uh-oh. gonna I'm gonna push it back one day, so it'll be tomorrow. available tomorrow, the day after the podcast is released. Right. I got a busy weekend ahead. <laughs> I got I got uh, some people coming into town that I that I can't be distracted. We'll say it's, it'll be available quickly after this podcast is released. Exactly. We won't put a date to it. And um, and so there's only gonna be twenty. Okay. I, oh, it's I, a limited run. I only ever? yeah. Well, ever? No, 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 not ever. Okay. If if there's enough demand for it, you'll make more. I'll make more. Okay. But I just wanted to start. I wanted to start small. That's fine. No, yeah. you have to start small. That's how everything goes. You got to start yeah. somewhere. Um, I do want to ask you a little, a, f- a few more things. Okay. Because I haven't really. I mean, you have. Well, you know, we've we had our interview last podcast, so we haven't had a good discussion about this brand that you started Mm -hmm. uh, only in passing. But the one thing that is on the, uh, Edor, um, Instagram page, it says mod was to say, uh, future antiques designed to delight. Yeah. 
I liked the idea of future antiques. Can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that? What is a future antique yeah. to you? Well, I, my, my feeling about a future antique is something that hopefully you want to keep around. Okay. You know, kind of like Scott's whole philosophy of uh, if something smiles, it's easier to use. Right. My feeling is, is that if something is, is made well enough, but is also intriguing enough, you will, you will want to keep it around. Right. And so that's, that's the idea is like, I, I want these things to be long lasting. Of course. And, um, so the idea of future antiques and also like, because of using 3d printing. So I've 3d printed this bottle opener at Shapeways. It, it almost, it gives it this antique quality, like the way that the finish comes out. Right, it's, it, everyone's a little bit, there's variation, right? Yeah, which I really like because it feels, like I feel like my, the market of, of Edor is more like the maker side of things mm, almost interesting. because of these okay. limited runs. And, and so like, I like that these aren't really crisp objects. They have like a little bit of character to them. Yeah. There's, and so I feel like that also kind of makes it this like it's like this relic from the future because it, you know, this doesn't necessarily hearken to anything past. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. I love it, James. <laughs> I love I it. I appreciate it. No, I'm excited. I mean, I know you've been working this on this for a long time, so it's it's great to see it yeah. to fruition. You know, it's. I really, I, I, I mean, I have to give it up to the people who have started their things and have kept them going, such as yourself, such as Elise, because it's that first step is so hard to just like start to right. start to put yourself out there, put the objects out there, like get everything codified. The other part of it is that in the past like month, I've been working through like the LLC process yeah. and the DBA process. The 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 minor details that we all don't like. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I do have to say, and we are not sponsored by them, of course. But LegalZoom, I've been using them, and it's been a fairly painless process, okay. and they're very helpful. So it's it's kind of been enjoyable, and it's. You know, I don't know about for you, and maybe this is a question for you, but you know, part of this is also just an exploration and like, how do you start something? Right. And and so like, is is that how you feel about almost object, or do you feel like almost object is is something else for you? Um, I think you know, almost object for me, I mean, at least for the brand side of things, is definitely a little bit different than the future antique. Yeah. You know, it's more about experimentation right objects that kind of explore what it means to be an object but in terms of what it how it relates to to my i don't know experience with it it does feel very much like a learning process it's mm -hmm. like yeah i can design a cool thing but everyone can design cool stuff right. how do you actually get it made how do yeah. you sell it to people how do you market it how do you ship this stuff yeah shipping oh man i'll tell you what <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like a, it's a process. It's a learning process. Yeah. The crazy part about it is, uh, you know, we are so fortunate to live in this day and age where you can literally like get a Squarespace, get a Shopify, get a, yeah. you know, a label maker and you know, like you, you just 3d printed these through Shapeways. You yeah. have an entire brand of products that you can share with, you know, right. the world, which is amazing. And I, you know, all that to say, just because those things are available, doesn't mean that it's easy. Yeah, it's because definitely still it, hard. <laughs> it's still it's still just a lot. I mean, I just found myself I I kind of like took 3 days the past week and just was working through all these things and there was like it was basically there was not a moment of downtime. It was just like moving from one thing to the next. Yeah. And, um, and you got to build a website. You have to do all that. I also, you know me, I'm the shout out king. I have to give a shout out to Sean Davidson who and McKay Nelson. They uh, they took some photos yeah. for me of the bottle opener. And uh, McKay is actually the one who found the font for me because I was you, using help. Let, let me just let's just get this straight. Yeah, you are shouting out. Uh, McKay Nielsen for finding a font for you. Hey man, finding a good font. 
James, I'm, if I let you run this podcast, I'm sure you'd shout. <laughs> you'd shout everyone all the way back to like Adam and Eve. <laughs> shout out Adam and Eve. Um, no, I mean, no, no, I, I, I kind of joke, but uh, <laughs> I think I, you know, it was one of those things where like I was hanging out with McKay, and I was, and he was like, "Oh, what font are you using?" I was like, "Oh, I was just going to use Helvetica," and he's like, "I." I will die before you use Helvetica. <laughs> and he found this really cool font called, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Champ. Okay. And uh, it's just like, it's got, a, it's great because I feel like it does capture a lot of the sort of like character that I'm going for. And um, yeah, it's still a sans serif, but it's got a little flair to it. Yeah. And uh, so, I dig it. I dig it. So anyway. Yeah. Shout um, out, shout out McKay. But, but, <laughs> Yeah, anyway. But I, shout out shout out to you, Nick, because I, I will say that you have been very supportive of me through this whole process. And I really appreciate that. I mean, you know, it's like I'm starting a brand, you've started a brand, but like I do feel like we're we're kind of traversing in sort of different lanes. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know. Are you saying this is competition? No, I'm I'm saying that like like somebody could have seen it as competition, but but I like I appreciate that I've gotten nothing from you but support. Of course, man. Yeah. Oh, I, I you would never. Yeah, I would never, di- you know, discourage you from creating awesome stuff. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah. Also, yeah. I, I I joked about the McKay and Sean thing, but uh, we we possibly might need to talk to them because I think they have some really good skill sets that we should talk to them about on the podcast. Absolutely. Um, so anyway, that is my like sixteen minute hey, spiel. Listen, you 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 need to give that spiel, man. <laughs> this is a big day. Yeah, um, that's great though. Um, Nick, what do you what have you been up to? Uh, you know, I've just been working. Um, not not nothing too crazy. I've been working on my website a little bit. That's yeah, what, that's one thing I've been kind of like doing on the side. Um, I've been seeing some samplers on the Discord. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, maybe this isn't another kind of broader idea I've been thinking about is as, as I've as I've grown and progressed through my short career so far, I've I kind of feel like I'm starting to get to this point where I have a lot of products I've designed. Right. Some of them doesn't don't really have a ton of process. I mean, you know, I think you're kind of taught in school, like there's this rigorous process. You want to show all your work, mm-hmm. you want to post online, post in your Behance and portfolio and all this, you know, all the, show all the sketches, show all the models, um, and then you'll show the final thing. And that's been my format for, you know, five years or so. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of reaching this point now where it's like, well, I did this pet product or I did this other product. And really all I did was like, a couple thumbnail sketches, mm. 3D modeled it out, tested it, and it was good. And right. Then, and then we shipped it. And, you know, you might think of that as being like, oh, no, like, he didn't work really hard on that product. But I think it's more about kind of harkening back to some of the other conversations we've had on the podcast. Like, it's not that we didn't work hard on that part product. It's, it's that all the years led up to being able to complete that product in a very short amount of time. Right. Um, which leads me to the point now where it's like, well, I don't have like a full process for this product, but I really like the product. Yeah. Um, how do I show that off? And so I've been thinking about more of a just pure product website Mm. where it's, uh, maybe I won't fully commit to it yet, but it's, I want to have a whole page just on my homepage of, uh, renderings of all my products, Yeah. but I'm going to make them cool. Because, you know, it, it, gotta, it gotta make it fun, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna do little isometric 3D renderings, and yeah. they're gonna have, um, if you go to nicholas baker.com backslash fun, you can see some of them. Um, but they're gonna have little animations. So whenever you hover your mouse or you uh, touch it on your iPhone, they will play a little animation. So if you go to nicholas baker Nicholas Dash Baker backslash fun. You'll see all the weight weight animations. I also posted on my Instagram, but um, it's a fun little like, uh, like it, you know, it has that like animation feel to it. It yeah. almost reminds me of Roller Coaster Tycoon because it has that isometric viewpoint. Yeah, um, ISO's in right now, man. It's it's trending. It's hot. So 
I don't know. That's something I've been working on. That's really cool. Been, How been digging into the the web website code, HTML, CSS, all that fun crap. So you so you did do all of these in Keyshot, like yeah, I rendered the animations in Keyshot. Okay. Um, I might I might reach out to some other people to do some more of the complex animations, but right. Derek J. Elliott. Yeah, I've I've, <laughs> I, I've 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 talked to him a little bit. He's gonna give me some advice or help me out or something. So we'll yeah, we will. We're I'll, gonna I'll have continue to update. It's a big task to like render out because because the goal with this is to not have like twelve projects. The goal of this is to have all the products that I'm proud of. You know, and that grows over time. So it could be eighty or whatever. You know, hundred and yeah, it just keeps growing. And then be able to like sort them and have like the featured ones at top. And then also like, oh, maybe I can click the projects button and click toys or furniture or objects. I, that, that's that's my grand vision for it. That's sweet. But, you know, I don't know. It's just a fun little thing I was experimenting with. I like it. Was there was there anything that, that gave you this inspiration to do this? Um. Oh, I was thinking. Oh, yeah. I know. Uh, Tim Zarkey. Uh, oh yeah, fellow fellow Discord member, and awesome uh, visual artist slash render artist. Yeah, I don't know what Zarki, Zarki considers. He's a he's a jack of all trades, or really a master of all trades, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, he's he had built a a block builder game, right? Um, that has this isometric uh, and one uh, light source kind of style, and yeah. it's, it has this very cartoony but also very it's like that future retro style. Yeah. I think that subconsciously inspired me. Um, but yeah, I know. That's awesome. I was checking out other other designers' websites. Got to check out like Crim Machine's website and all that. Yeah. Um, and seeing you know, how like they display their products and things like that. Yeah. Because because like we've talked about it before, like Crim Machine and some of the other designers and like design studios don't show much process on their website. No. Because it's a client forward forward facing website. Right compared to students in school. Yeah. So I don't want to get that. I want to make sure that distinction is correct. Cause I know there's students listening to this being like, Oh, I don't, I don't have show process anymore. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very important to show process when you're getting a job and when you're, you know, I guess early in your career. Right. But I think if you're at the point where you're working to show your website to clients and things, maybe there's a reason to switch over to more of a product based yeah. website. And I mean, I, I have seen maybe not firms like Karim Rashid, but there are other firms that'll post like case studies. Right. And that kind of gives you an insight into their pro their yeah. process, but then they'll have like a page of their products. Right. 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 Yeah. So it's like a combination of the two. Right. Um, and I've also seen other people where like at the bottom, it'll say like, click here for my process. Oh, that's interesting. You know? So yeah, there's 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 a a lot of ways to do it, but I think you're right in making that distinction that like for students, process is important because you're selling yourself right. to employers. Right. Whereas for you, you might be selling yourself to companies. Right. As hey, let me design for you because check out check out these sweet animations. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, sweet. Yes, yeah, so that's I dig what, it. That's that's all I've been up to. Yeah. All, anything that's all the notable news i'm sure that eventually uh, i've been working on some stuff in the background but we'll get there eventually yeah um hey buy a pin buy a pin i don't have any pins out for oh the video. oh my gosh just pretend like we're holding i'm gonna a i'm gonna cgi a pin into my hand <laughs> um yeah if you if you guys Look at this if you guys want a pin we we still have uh several left um and we also wanted to shout out people that have bought a pin all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the the thing, and then Let's you do this. And then you do the thing. All right, Ooh. all right. We're gonna shout out Michael N. Thank you, Ryan H. Thank you, Michael W. Thank you, Stephen G. Thank you, Sarah N. Thank you. That's it. Not as many as last time. No. Oh. But last time we had say, we had built them all up. That was our first shout out. <laughs> but no, thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast. If Absolutely. You, if you want to support the podcast, go on our website, myerdetailspodcast.com. And you can find the link there to buy a pin. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get some new merch here soon. We're, we're thinking on our, our topic idea a little bit. Yeah. Of uh, Or not our topic, our competition idea a little bit. Right. Going to think out some of those details of possibly having some sort of 
minor detail merch competition, but that, yeah, we, we have to flesh that out a little bit more, but we're getting close to something and yeah. should be, should be pretty fun. Um, also I, I, I think I need to say join the discord because especially because if you enjoyed our last two episodes, our interviews, and I think we're going to, you know, see if we can encourage our, the people we interview to do this. Scott Henderson joined the Discord and was basically doing an AMA. Yeah. And it was so awesome to watch the interaction. Yeah. Because, you know, people in the Discord got to ask him questions, you know, straight to the man himself. And, yeah, I, I am super excited that Scott's on the Discord now. And hopefully, you know, he st- sticks around and, and be- becomes part of the community. I, I think it's also something you guys have been asking for as well. I know you guys really want to talk to the people that we're interviewing. So, you know, hopefully we'll make this more of a, a common thing, but yeah, if you guys are interested in talking to Scott Wilson, Scott Henderson, sorry, Scott Henderson, <laughs> not Scott Wilson yet, yet, <laughs> um, Scott Henderson. Yeah. Check out the discord. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we wanted to move on to a micro. Mm. Wait, no, I, what? I got one more announcement. Okay, this is this episode is just for a lot of announcements. Okay, uh, but um, school's back. Sc- school's back for all of the students, um, the minor details listener students, and I just want to say, like, all you like juniors and seniors, you know, just like walk up to the sophomore and be like, hey, you listen to a podcast? <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Just, we try have, to, just try to get some promotion here. We That's have it. an inside man <laughs> who just started his freshman year. Yeah, Chris Ferentz. Chris Ferentz. Hey, you better be pinning people all over with, with the minor details pins. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, let him know. Let yeah. him know the good word. Spread the word about the podcast. All right, micro details time. Micro details. We need, we need little, like, we should talk to Kiyoshi the Kid. Get some sound About bites. little, like... Little fun like sound bites. I need a like, little, a goo, little goo, 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 micro details. I need one of those little launch pad things. What are they called? Beep, 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 beep. Uh, soundboard. Soundboard. Yeah, we need. We definitely need one. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, the micro detail this week is adding weight to objects Ooh. or products. This is this is one of those like, things like unnecessary weight. Yes. Like the, dead weight. This is one of those things that I don't think anybody knows about until they leave school yeah and and i don't know if every professional knows about it either no because some objects are just heavy in and of themselves (laughs) right like an anvil yeah (laughs) if you're out there designing for acme corp (laughs) you don't need to add any more weight to that anvil um but yeah i you know this is something that i've come across uh, especially, I think you come across it functionally at first. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember at, when I was working at Petmate, we, I designed, or I was working with the other designer who was working on some, like, wobble toys. Mm. Oh, right. Um, I also designed a wobble toy, but, you know, obviously... You designed a wobble toy? It, I, okay, I designed this sphere that has a motorized but- butterfly inside of it. Okay. Um and I wasn't trying to put you on the spot. I'm just, I'm just interested. I feel like the wobble toy people need to form their own union. <laughs> the wobble toy coalition. Yeah. Um, I designed a cat toy that was a plastic sphere. It was clear. It had a, a butterfly with kind of this wire that spun around and it looked really realistic. Mm. Um, it's really cool. And the base of it. What's it called? It's called the Jackson Galaxy Butterfly Ball. Oh, Jackson Galaxy. I know him well. Yes, the cat daddy. Um, I've bought some Jackson Galaxy merch yes. since since uh, adopting a new cat. Um, so the bottom of it is weighted with the motor and the batteries and such, but it's also a sphere, so I didn't want it to like flip over right. and, and roll around, especially... I will not sign up, Groupon. Uh, okay, James. Sorry. <laughs> uh, especially... Um, if the cat's batting around, I didn't want to roll under the couch and, you know, get lost. So I, so I added artificial weight to the, to base, uh, to hold it down from rolling around. Right. Um, so that's like a scenario where it was functional. Um, but I mean, you and I have designed a product that had non-functional weight 
purely just so that when you held it, it felt good. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, that it, cause I, I'm familiar with the, with the process from doing kitchen tools and gadgets and you think about a lot of plastic kitchen tools and gadgets, like, you know, your turner or your spoon or your slotted spoon, any of those plastic items, the plastic doesn't have much weight to it. Right. And so we would spec out, we would put weights into the handles of the products to, to give them more weight. I did not know this. I mean, this is all, this is all bit like psychological. Right. I mean, everybody, everybody knows that the heavier something is, the more valuable it seems. Well, I, he, or where the, do you think that stems from? That's an odd thing to think, right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure because I, I just feel like my, my reaction is like, if I pick up something that's super light, then it feels, it feels flimsy. It feels breakable. Yeah. It feels cheap for some reason. That's, that's a intri- that's a more like a deep dive into psychology. Yeah, but- I have no I I don't know the deeper psychological phenomenon there. That's interesting. But I so mean So you guys put weight like like were they lugs of weight or were they formed? Did you actually form the weights and then put them into the plastic? I don't think they were formed. Was the were the weights inserted while then jet was it like over molded onto the weights? No, I mean or like inserted after. The I fact? think it was a part of the assembly process. So okay. cuz cuz a lot of a lot of kitchen tools and gadgets, you have a master handle right. that is applied across a line. Right, like a spatula is, has the same handle as a spoon. Yeah, has the same, yeah, right. And so, like in, like in the midst of that process of assembly, the weight is put in. Interesting. Um, yeah. No, it it is one of those like, you, obviously, if you have a metal, you know kitchen item you don't really need to add weight but for the plastic ones it does it does make it feel a lot better yeah i mean i think we've all experienced it like it's it's something that we understand it's just like an interesting thing that you don't even think about yeah i also another little fun tidbit this is kind of going off of um i mean this is not it maybe this is not this is more tangential to the weight discussion but uh another interesting thing is when when i designed some cat products i tore apart some cat toys just like cheap right like dollar store type of toys yeah they're like maybe it's like stuffed you know mice or whatever and the toys had little rattling sounds in them yeah and you could hear this rattling sound in, inside so i found the little rattle and it looks like um what is the kinder surprise eggs it looks you know the kinder surprise eggs kinder surprise they're like the little chocolate eggs that are ban- banned in america because they have toys in them let me see they have this like yellow oh yeah there's this like yellow egg uh canister that holds oh, all the toys oh yeah i swear i swear that the factory in china bought a bunch of these empty canisters went out into the driveway of the factory and picked up gravel and put it in the canister. Oh my gosh. Because when I opened up the canister, there's gravel in it. That gravel? One, that's what made the rattling noise. That's amazing. In cat toys. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know if that's cutting corners or just being resourceful, but, you know, <laughs> cat toys, it's a <laughs> slim margin market. Yeah. Well, I could almost imagine the, if it was an American designer asking for the toy or whoever it was, they'll ask the, the, ask the factory, like, make, make it rattle like that like put something here right. that rattles right it was definitely and, that was definitely the scenario and the factory was like what do we have we have <laughs> kinder toy capsules and oh look at that we have we've got gravel outside <laughs> um yeah I, I, that doesn't that does not surprise me right i mean that this is this is another tangent off of that is that like it's talking about those like master handles mm-hmm. um, for the kitchen tools and gadgets. There was there was this one big push in within the design studio to to sort of refine the construction of these master handles, right? And to get it so that it's like it's a super secure, like never going to come out of the handle type design. 
And I, I'm pretty sure if my memory serves me correctly, that we got back like the first samples and it was, we, and we sawed through the handle right. to check. Yeah, and yeah. it was literally just like glue. Oh my God. <laughs> You just know, straight epoxy. Yeah. Filled to the brim. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing is like some, some of, some of designing and manufacturing is like calling the factory out <laughs> on things that they have just completely shortcut. And, right. but I mean, maybe that's just, that was never in their wheelhouse to begin with, but yeah. they were just like, oh, of course we can make your product. Right, right. So I, yeah, I think the moral of that story is to just always be very specific in how you want it to be. Always, always check the insides of your product oh, when yeah. you get them back. Always check the insides because well. you never know. You never know what you'll find. You never know what Kinder Egg <laughs> could be in there. Um, I don't know if we should we should dive into a topic or maybe we do a short topic and some questions. What do you think, James? Oh man, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe maybe we'll just do a lot of questions. We can have this one be more of a question than a uh, topic. Yeah, let's do that. Because I know we had our, our good uh, launch of our new your new brand, Edor. Um, all right, so we'll do question time then. Um, James just spun my spun my bottle opener. Whoa, that is not a euphemism, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you have a question yourself, send it to podcast at gmail.com. I think we have designed ourselves out of gmail now that we have the discord people don't oh, send us yeah. questions anymore through the email just never the, just the discord yeah which is fine but i definitely prefer the email because i can categorize them and organize them but regardless we did have a, a good question come from hello man manav mm-hmm. and they say what are some good habits a designer should cultivate especially when they're early on in their career maybe we can have an episode discussion or a question about that um that's a good question. What are some good habits? Oh, man. I feel like I'm still trying to form good habits. Yeah, I mean, habits are really difficult just to form. But I think, you know, I think generally we all have routines. I mean... Oh, okay, well, okay. I won't James, do that again. James is <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make it, put it in its tree form. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so some good habits. Well, for one, I, I have a few things that I like to do. At least just to start my day. Maybe maybe it's more of like a routine question. Like, what do you? What's your morning routine like? One thing that I enjoy doing is just drinking my coffee and not not doing anything except drinking my coffee. Mm. I don't enjoying know. Enjoying it. Enjoying it and just like you know, medit. You know, you can call it whatever you want. Meditating, mindfulness, thinking about your day, or thinking Think, about nothing in spe- in nothing, particular. Nothing in nothing in particular, but just like taking a moment out of your day to like you know just catch your breath. Yeah. I think it's very important. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, my morning routine recently, we've been, uh, my wife and I have been attempting intermittent fasting. I don't know if you know about this trend. Is this a new trend? This is a new trend. (laughs) But uh, studies have shown that if you eat within a 10-hour window, 10 or 12-hour window, it's very beneficial for your health, regardless of what you're eating. Wait, like you eat all your meals within 10 10 hours. 10 hours. Okay, so if you ate at 8 a.m., you should eat at 6 p.m. at the, the latest. latest. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And, I mean, I I kind of feel like we've, as a society, we've been bamboozled into thinking that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It I don't is, know. James. I don't know what lobby. James, let me just tell you about Listen. Ego chip chocolate chip waffles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what lobby got it into our heads that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I haven't had breakfast James in like weeks. James, you need breakfast. And I feel great. I feel fine. I will have my first coffee at nine o'clock. We wake up at like seven on my first coffee at nine. And then, yeah, like we'll eat eat before seven o'clock. And then I'm good because, because the thing is a lot of people do snacking after like after they've eaten the late night snack yeah that's no good (laughs) according to these studies i'm no health expert but i will tell you that i do feel good like doing this yeah but i do very much enjoy my early morning coffee yeah i very much look forward to it do you do you use it as a time to kind of let your mind rest or what like to prepare for your day i do it as a time to abuse 
a substance <laughs> that is necessary <laughs> in my survival. Uh, I, I, I am so much about the ritual of coffee, of making coffee. I, it is nice. It's like a ritual. It's like yeah. a, it's like a process. It's, it's like an enjoyable thing. Yeah. I, it, there, there is like, there's something so satisfying about the ritual. It's like, there's, there's not many other things in life where you're like, Hey, well you have to do like these 10 steps before <laughs> and it's going to be great. You're going to love it. Right, right. It's like, all right, I got to take out the trash. There's 10 steps to taking out yeah. the trash. <laughs> But uh, no, I really enjoy it. And when I was in college, now I'm doing like espresso yeah. drinks. In college, I had a whole, I did have a whole breakfast routine where I was making scrambled eggs. I was making French press coffee. I think that's, I just, I'm a cereal boy since I was born. Really? Yeah. I graduated from Cocoa Puffs to Cheerios. That's, <laughs> that's as far as I've gone. <laughs> I remember that. Um, uh, yeah. I So... I've always had coffee a part of the routine, but this doesn't this doesn't feel like it's helpful at all. Well, there, yeah, I mean, I think maybe the helpful tidbit in that is like having a morning routine kind of sets up your day for success, yeah. right? I do think, and I heard this from, I think I might have said this before on the podcast, but Jacko, Jacko Will, Willink, who's, right. a, he's who's a, a podcaster. Yeah, he's a... And like an intense, like ex-Navy SEAL right. type guy. His whole thing is have the list of what you're going to do the night before because mm. I do find it overwhelming like if I go into the day without with with zero plan of attack like if I don't have any clue of like where I'm starting that is like an overwhelming feeling of anxiety but if I make that list the night before it's much easier to get up and get going does he number the list is it like in priorities uh, or is it just I'm, like I'm a list of things to do i'm not sure i think it's just a list of things to do i have a list of things to do but i've never i feel like i never get it done <laughs> so maybe i need to the, list the them ongoing, out as, as priorities the ongoing or something whiteboard list yes the ongoing yeah. whiteboard list um i i have a, a few other thoughts maybe on habits um maybe these are more technical habits but these are good habits to as a designer you should cultivate probably early on in your career um i don't know what you think about this but I think like parametric modeling. I don't know if mm. how how you are in 3D CAD, um, but I remember early on. It's taken me a while to like. You look. don't know how I am. I mean, I you know. tell that to my face. <laughs> you see me parametric. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to get at, James, <laughs> is that um, you know parametric modeling. It's based around parameters. Like it's all based around these like simple steps that you build up a 3D model. So maybe, yeah. you know, for example, you're building, you're designing a bike and you design out the wheels and the wheels are, you know, 30 inches in diameter. I don't know if that's realistic or not, but you know, you design out the wheels and then you design the frame on the wheels and everything like that. And you finish off the, the 3D model and then someone comes to you and they're like, Hey, uh, we changed our wheel size. It needs to be 28 inches. Mm. And going back to the very beginning of your 3D model to change that, those two inches can ruin right. the entire 3D model. Oh, yeah. So I think over time, I've learned to really build out my 3D models in a way that I can change those two inches and everything else updates. Yeah. So I, I mean, that, that's, that's a habit that I think has been helpful, at least for, I don't know, streamlining your process. Yeah. I used to say back in the Lifetime brand days when... You know, this was my first job out of school and we were all using SolidWorks. I used to say, like, we were basically, like, disarming bombs. Like, when we were doing CAD, because if you... If you if, mess up if one if thing, you, it all like, goes... Poof. Yeah, and everything goes red. Yeah, yeah, It's, like, the most horrifying feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I I do try as much as I can to make things that I can that I can edit and everything will update. It's such a satisfying feeling when you have that right. Yeah. Um, another, another habit that I think young designers should cultivate is about the people around them. Spot the people around you that you aspire to, to like in, in terms of like skills. Right. Like maybe there's one person that kind of embodies what, where you want to be. Or maybe there's, you know, a bunch of people that have different skills. Right. Like, 
you should not be afraid to approach them and to start to cultivate a relationship where you can you can start to learn from them definitely i i mean not not everybody's going to end up at a at a place where people are just going to walk up to you and be like let let's work on this skill <laughs> right. together let me show you this cool thing i can do yeah. let me teach you it yeah yeah you got to go out there and be proactive about it i think like that's how i got one of the cooler positions that i had while i was a lifetime brands was with the advanced concepts groups and that's that's because i loved what they were doing as soon as i walked in the door and i was just building the relationship with the head of the head of the program uh jason poor and because i i wanted like if there was an opening at some point i mean i also just enjoyed him as a person and like enjoyed talking to him because we could talk about we could just you know talk about design um but i i really wanted to do that kind of work yeah yeah and whether it was actually working for him or just having his ear and his feedback like that was really important to me yeah i mean i think there's definitely some sort of habit you could build up of like wherever you are in your career maybe that's in school or in your first job or second job or what it whatever it is there could be a this avenue that you should always be kind of pursuing more you should always be right. asking other people questions and, and trying to learn as much as you can yeah i mean and that kind of like that level of proactivity is also going to reflect well on you like the way that other people view you right that it's i mean i feel like it was sort of natural for me to want to do that but I, I just like want to encourage people that if they're at all hesitant to do that, to reach out to their coworkers, like just don't like reach out to them. And if you compliment somebody on a skill that they have, they're going to open up. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, definitely. So yeah, that's a good one. I, yeah. I, I there's actually, I, I wrote down a few habits. Maybe we keep going. I think this is good. Okay. Um, what about documenting your work? I think that is a very underrated skill oh, at the man. very beginning of your career. I feel that people like miss all the time. I feel like I feel like you and I had probably very similar experiences where the work was coming in so rapid fire. Like working at a company, the companies like we were, yeah, there was just always a project coming up, and it's hard to document. Yeah, it's hard to take the time, go like set up a nice like you don't, you know, background and make some like nice th- you know picture of your right. 3d prints like that takes time absolutely and you don't necessarily have a team of people that's all working on the same project that you can that are also documenting right it's really it's really really hard to get into a good habit of documentation i um, mean i mean i guess one th- note for that is like back up your files at least bare, oh, yeah. bare minimum back them up because there's so many horrible stories of people losing their files, losing their computer, yeah. you know, back it up on a hard drive, give it to your friend so that when your house burns down, <laughs> your friend has it. If both your houses burn down, well, then it probably was some sort of <laughs> scheme going on there, <laughs> insurance scheme. So I don't know what's going on there. But uh, yeah, backup files. I, I still think, you know, we all have our iPhones in our pocket. Take five minutes, put up a nice, you know, clear desk, take a photo. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like I, I, I feel like there's probably every single day there's probably something to document. Mm-hmm. Even if you just want to sloppily like throw it into an InDesign file, like whatever images you that you've taken that day, like just do it. Yeah. Um, another thing that I started doing at Lifetime Brands at at one point, and it's kind of something that I want to get back into doing, was actually sort of doing like logs at the end of every day just to talk just to like write like things that i learned oh that's interesting because because i would find a lot of times like oh my gosh i'm getting sort of like repeat advice and or like you know repeat like somebody is telling me the same thing over and over and instead of continuing to ask the same question because the question only comes around Mm, once a month right like i should write it down so you remember but also like just writing down the decisions that were made that day and why, because there are 
there were a lot of times in my old job where we would be like, why did, why did we make that decision? Right, and right, right. nobody has an answer. Right. Cause the, you know, the spatula handle has a three kilogram <laughs> weight attached to it. And everyone's like, why is this? Yeah. And then you go back to your logs and you realize, well, yeah, we, we given the spatula to Shaq. And he needs he needs some to gain some muscle mass or something. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, whatever you need to do to get better free throws, but but yeah, I mean, I um I I did feel like that was a good habit that I had started and the thing about habits, I I forget the the thing is like, you know, you it takes you so many days to form form a habit. Right. It is very it is very hard to like maintain good habits. Right. Have you ever done a habit pairing? No. What's that? That I have actually found more su- success with that than anything else. Uh, I think I I just threw out the word habit habit pairing, but that's how I think about it in my mind. I I don't know what it's actually called, but essentially, if you want to learn a new habit, you you attach that habit to a habit that you've already started. Oh. Right. So you know you know if you want to, uh, I don't know, go for a run. You have to figure out some a habit that you do in the morning or in the evening that you already kind of that's already like tangential to that, mm-hmm. um, and you had to tag that along. Interesting. I I, don't, I can't think of a good example right now. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like how that. Like I don't know. Like uh, I mean, flossing. Flossing is a habit that a lot of people struggle with. Right. You have to tag that on to. Um, what you know, whether it's like taking a shower or brushing your teeth or something like that. Right, right, right. Um, maybe that's more of a distinction there. Or like watching a show. Yeah, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, like maybe you put on, like maybe you put on a certain song, or maybe you put on, like it's it's like a time in the day right. where you put on a certain type of music, and like that's you then like go into your right to doing your logs right it's it's usually something of like it's pairing something with something you don't like with something you that you do like and you already do habitually or a snack like a specific kind of snack yeah yeah. that's interesting okay yeah i like that i'm sure that there's plenty of youtube videos that talk talk about it way more than i could um but also i don't i'm sorry i don't want to like drag on i mean this is good this is is a good topic should have been a full topic yeah i mean it kind of is at this point Uh, um I do want to add on to the documenting note. Okay. Here, here's a, a hot take, and I, <laughs> I'm not promoting this. You should definitely, uh, you know, review this with your employer or what, whoever is in charge. But um, whoa, backup, backup company files, uh, as as appropriate, on on your home computer. Okay. Um, because you know there are times when like you are, you know, if, if you feel like you have to ask your boss, ask your boss, like don't do anything illegal. But, right. Um, you need to, uh, you know, when you leave that job, you may not have that resource anymore. Right. And when you're going back five years later because, oh, crap, I have to find a new job and up to my portfolio, and you have none of those products that process and products that you worked on yeah. except for the Amazon sold out <laughs> image <laughs> image that's on, you know, that, of the product you designed. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sticky situation. Very much so. And, and also a sticky scenario of taking files off company computers to your home computer but yeah i will let you guys decide that between yourselves i'm not promoting that just i just want you guys to be aware it's it's a good point yeah um okay what do you think any more habits or should we any uh, more habits should we move on to a, another question i think uh I don't oh, know. Okay, here I got another one. Oh, oh man, Nick's got habits. This is this is not necessarily a habit, but I think it's a good thing to remember. Uh huh. I'm I'm I really try to be good at this, but I've been on the other side of it where it's it's not fun, which is answering messages. Um, you know, especially especially on social media, and emails, but just answering them. Right. Doesn't matter what you say, even if it's emoji or something, just acknowledging that the other person exists. Mm. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I've been in, in this scenario where maybe I really admire a designer. You know, there's, they do great work. And I message them and I follow them and I really enjoy what they do. And, you know, I respond to their Instagram stories and things like that. And then I realize, like, I've never, they've never even 
responded to me. Mm. They never even gave me an emoji. They never even acknowledged that I existed. And it's a little bit disheartening. Yeah. And I, I do apologize because I know that I definitely miss messages on my Instagram, but I try hard so to have you, respond. So have you paired your habit of messaging <laughs> famous designers with a habit of crying alone and in your bedroom? I don't know if that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. That's a interesting habit slash yeah i mean maybe that's i feel like we should just do an episode on social media conduct oh that's a good that's a good (laughs) maybe i don't know um but yeah i think um i you know i think that habits and good habits are once again i feel like i say this all the time but it is like it is an a lifelong iterative process of like refining habits what about you should have a habit to always be changing your habits. Oh, <laughs> gosh. I don't know if that really makes sense. I mean, my, there, there's something there to uh, always be kind of switching things. Yeah. Up. My friend in college, Case Lowndike, he, uh, we joined this uh, website called Type Tees where you would type in like uh, an idea for a t-shirt for like a slogan on a t-shirt and you would get voted up and down and like there was like votes every week wait you had this idea no 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 no. this was a thing an idea for a t-shirt yeah so me and case and our friend chris carpenter we would do this like this was our sophomore studio we would do this like for an hour we would just like submit ideas how many Oh, a lot. Did you ever make it? No. What happens, you get, us, to, what happens if you did. get to the top of the I think, list? I think Chris was the closest because he had just like, re- I mean, he's the king of clever. Like he had a t-shirt that was, aren't we all under the weather? Like <laughs> it's pretty gold. But, and mine were always very, very weird. Like yeah. you can lead a horse to water, but you can't teach him to knit. <laughs> that's, and, that's pretty good. and then Case had... It, a great t-shirt which was uh old hobbits die hard lord of the rings I don't, i'm not familiar but i know what hobbits are well, no <laughs> it's just, the table you go, I'm audio. just 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 think about it just think about like also they would make illustrations along with these t-shirts you guys had to sketch things up for your no, no 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 they would do that oh your this was did. this was a part of um this was a part of what's the what's the website that does all like the the like threadless cure yeah threadless yes. so it was a threadless like offshoot was type T's. oh interesting but um anyway old hobbits die hard because uh because yeah Bil- Bil- bilbo baggins was was around until old age yeah but anyway Those hobbits man that's that is that is what that is the end of this topic old hobbits die hard i think we should probably just go straight to the shout out of the week that sounds good james yeah um yeah, shout out of the week. You found this guy this time. I did find this guy. I actually found him through Twitter uh, because I James, am. Are you a Twitter? Man I am now? on Twitter. I don't do much. Tell me on about your Twitter. experience on Twitter. Is it a thing? I the thing that I enjoy on Twitter is that you can access it. You can post and access it on your computer or on your phone, and there's also just like I I do like the. Like people can just post like a thought right. or people can post like a link to a video. Like it's very, it's, it's a little very more informal link friendly. Oh, link friendly. Okay. Whereas like, you know, Instagram not is not friendly. very link friendly nope. and it's like almost, it's pretty much purely mobile. Right. Like you go onto the Instagram website and you're like, why yeah. is this? Why does this exist? Yeah, I think yeah. this is, exists for our podcast. Here's a beef I have. Why is there no Instagram on the iPad though? Oh yeah, that's like that weird like yeah, <laughs> it's like just it, it's scaled. I'm pretty sure oddly to the iPad. The Instagram app is the only app left that is still not designed for iPad. Yeah, every other app is there's an iPad. It's version. very it's very strange. All right, sorry. Let's get back. Let's get to our shout out. But yeah, so I found this guy James Owen Design, and I just found his work and his presentation really interesting because. He does a lot, although he does do 3D, he also does a lot of just like a straight up side view rendering of things that I I found refreshing because it's like, they're actually pretty beautiful renderings. Are these, they're they're key shot renderings or are they illustrator renderings? I think, I feel like they're, 
I'm not sure. This one might be key shot, but it feels like it could also just be a Photoshop yeah. or an Illustrator rendering. Like this, this one definitely. This is a teapot. Yeah, this teapot strikes me as as maybe. I, I'm not sure. I would have to ask him. It definitely could have been. It uh, could designed be like a Adobe very. Illustrator. It could be a very flat feeling, like you know this this blender one feels like it could be a key shot rendering i mean but this, this is like I, is, is it trending is it trending now to get rid of perspective altogether i don't know i mean we're we're going for we've we got, we're the, we got ISO. isometric we're at iso now or we might be degrading all the way to orthographic but um you know you go back far enough and you can see that james can also do some really nice sketch work um but i just was really intrigued with the way that he was presenting his work as these straight up side views i do i mean it side view can tell the entire story sometimes and yeah it's, a lot of times a side view is way easier to do than it's, anything in perspective it's easy and it's economical it's time efficient right and it can yeah it can say a lot that like you could have this finished before you figure out the sketch underlay for perspective right exactly like a really complex perspective drawing exactly um but yeah, and I also like I like the way that he labels his things. He, you know, product archetype and he like he he sh says a brand and then he says a type of product. Oh, he's got that he's got that caption nailed down. Yeah, and to and science. This this product I love the inspiration for this product. So he says product archetype umbra vase and and then he he lists the process, die cast a machine vessel shaped based on a on the sound wave form, sound wave form of the word flower, which is just like, oh. it's just a beautiful idea. So, and so it has these kind of like jagged edges, a, a revolved kind of wavy edge. It looks like a bunch of discs right. almost stacked on top of each other. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, like something that I can totally, I can totally see without having to see this in this like three quarter view. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I just, I just thought that it was, it was, a an interesting alternative to the types of design Instagrams that you see. Yeah. Check out James. It's, uh, at James Owen design. And he's also got some sweet products on the market. Uh, really nice coffee maker and some, uh, Jabra or no pioneer headphones. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for listening, you guys. Let us know what you thought. Send us a send us an email if you. We definitely still like those as well. Yeah, minor uh, details podcast at gmail dot com. We still have the we still have the goose Google. I almost said goose voicemail. Go the goose voicemail. <laughs> Google voicemail um, is still alive. So if you want to send a voicemail to that, we won't answer. Don't worry. You can just record your voice and get to listen to it back. And that is one six four six four nine four forty eleven. Mm hmm. Um, what else? Subscribe to YouTube, YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, Google podcast. Yeah. Make sure you thumbs up on, uh, or thumbs up on YouTube, rate five star and, uh, Apple podcast. Do all of the relevant positive. Yes. You guys know. Uh, yeah. Ratings uh, for us. But no, it does seriously help you out. Like if you can't buy a pen, you know, just leave a, leave a nice review on Apple podcasts. Yeah. Um, and, uh, smash that like button. That's right. Hit that notification bell. That's right. We're almost at 1K subscribers on YouTube. Is that when we get the gold play or that, silver play? That is... Button. I'm, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure that's when we can start running advertisements <laughs> so that people don't have to keep buying pins. Um, but yeah, uh, shout out to Kiyoshi the Kid for our intro outro. And mm -hmm. as always, I'm at Nick P. Baker. And I'm at I Draw and Receipts. Peace out. Later.